Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. We are joined now by Vinayak Nagpal, founder and CEO of Zendar Incorporated. And Vinayak, welcome to AutoSense, and thank you for being with us. Thanks, Carl, for having me with you. Vinayak, let's start with the conception of Zendar, the beginning. What motivated you and the other founders to start the company? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, in 2017, when we started Zendar, uh, there was a lot happening in the industry. So my background was in a field of radio astronomy. So I built a lot of instrumentation for radio telescopes where you put antennas on the ground, try to make images of black holes and galaxies. And I was fascinated by the technology that goes into those telescopes. And I really wanted to do something that can bring that technology to something that helps people in their day-to-day -day life, you know? And that was that was my, my intent. And Jimmy, my co-founder, he worked in the field of autonomous driving and mapping. And he was saying, you know, everyone relies on cameras and LIDARs a lot and the radars are really poor quality and poor resolution. Uh, why can't we improve it? I was like, hey, we can use these techniques from radio astronomy and make radars better. And that was the kind of inception of the idea. But around that time, FCC opened up another four gigahertz of bandwidth for automotive radar. The compute started to become really cheaper and powerful enough. And car companies were putting more and more expensive compute in their cars. And also the uh, the methods to move data around in the car, like you know, high-speed interfaces started to become mature that you know, all these things came together. It was like, hey, now's the right time to bring these advanced concepts to automotive radar. And that, that's how we started Sendart. Vinayak, with that in mind, what are some of the problems? What are some of the top problems that you're solving right now in automotive? Yeah, you know, in automotive radar, there's two key, I'd say, um, you know, Achilles heel of an automotive radar. The first one is what I would call it is a resolution gap. So the resolution is... Uh, a lot poorer compared to a LiDAR and a camera. So that, that means like it's very hard for a radar to separate and distinguish different objects, like different pedestrians and vehicles in the scene. So that's one big problem. The second one is what I call as a classification gap. It's very hard for a radar to tell what is something. It can tell you there's something there, but it cannot tell you very well, very confidently that that's a person or that's a pole or that's a car. And so these are the two major problems. And all the approaches, like the technology approaches to improve radar performance on these dimensions has, has hit a point of diminishing returns. So, you know, it's uh, all the limits. So all, in the past, everyone tried to solve these problems with better hardware technology. And I think we've hit a point where putting more hardware or more expensive, fancy hardware is not necessarily going to improve this problem a lot more. So something fundamentally different was needed to kind of make progress on these problems and make like the next step jump in improvement using a completely different approach. And that's that's what Zendar is really focused on. Well, with that in mind, Vinayak, and if you say, you know, that hardware, maybe more hardware is not the solution, what is the approach then? How does your approach, how is that different from others that are out there right now? Yes. So there's two dimensions to this, right? First is we take this unique technology approach, but we also focus on a very unique or a new system architecture. And they're very tightly coupled. So I'll start with the technology approach. We take this approach of, which I would call is fusion first and AI first. So what does that mean? Fusion first means instead of trying to make a big radar with lots and lots of antennas and lots of like a big piece of hardware, what we try to do is take multiple simple radars in the front of the vehicle and combine information from them in a smart way that allows you to have a very large virtual aperture and a very high resolution coming from that. It's very similar to how a radio telescope works. So it's, it's a fusion first way to make a large antenna, not like a brute force make bigger hardware. And the same thing we do on the classification problem is traditionally radar, you know, you kind of get some sort of point cloud and you try to estimate what that point cloud is. Is that a person? What we do is we take an AI first approach. We apply AI first to the radar spectrum to try and identify what that object is and then create a point cloud. So that gives us a much better performance. And these two like fusion first and AI first approaches go hand in hand with a new system architecture, which we call is like a, a zonal or central compute architecture where the radar processing doesn't happen in the radar itself. 
but happens in a more uh, centralized location. It could be like a zonal processor in the front of the vehicle or maybe in the central processor. And that's where all the raw information from multiple radars is in one place that allows you to do this fusion first and AI first approach. So we, we you know, exclusively focused on this system architecture and where these two technologies, new technologies are huge differentiators. Vinayak, let's look at the other side of the coin for just a second. And maybe you've heard this before throughout your career, uh, but the isn't LIDAR a better option for 3D sensing as if to apply in, as if to imply that LIDAR is superior to radar. But what are your thoughts on that? So it's true. LIDAR is superior in some ways, right? So LIDAR does have better resolution than any any radar and but there's a flip side to that right so lidar has many failure modes so especially in like weather dust um, dark objects lidar just fails to see those things also lidars don't measure velocity don't measure the doppler natively so radar does that very well and finally you know the the building blocks of a lidar lasers lenses you know we don't have that much manufacturing history to make these things really high volume and really low cost. And that's why LiDAR is kind of expensive for at least the foreseeable future, right? And now if you take Zendar's technology, we're closing this resolution gap with LiDAR. So we are getting to about 0.2 degrees resolution, which is kind of close to 0.1 degrees that a LiDAR gets you at, right? So once the resolution gap is getting closer to, to LiDAR, and radar is already coming at a much lower cost point than, than, than LIDAR. It's also much more mature, established industry. It's already in mass production and very large volume. So it's uh, we, we do believe that with new technology like Zendar, the need for LIDAR kind of reduces or the role for LIDAR becomes like more postponed. It's more of a redundancy sensor because the, the, the key reason people were using LIDAR may not remain that, that valid anymore. We're speaking with Vinayak Nagpal, founder and CEO of Zendar Incorporated, talking about uh, next generation radar and getting a good overview there. Uh, Vinayak, with your approach, why do you believe that Zendar will be successful versus others? You know, st for a startup to succeed, there's, there's lots of different ingredients that have to come together. Uh, and one of the ones which we think is really important is you uh, you need to be way better than other existing options on the market, like uh, by a lot, because you are you're a small company or a new company. Um, and what we are seeing in the market and what the market is like, the locus of innovation is shifting from hardware to software, and that's where startups actually get an advantage in the market. So if you look at traditional um, traditional suppliers, which are tier ones. Uh, you know, they're they're very strong in hardware innovation. They're very strong in mass manufacturing. Uh, and the companies are really set up to bring high volume products to market, which are very, you know, but those same structures are not great for software innovation, where startups are actually very good at. And so if you take this combination together, like, you know, it, it becomes very powerful. So what Zendar did was, you know, we partnered with all the major tier ones in the industry. And, you know, they're really good at hardware. We're bringing software innovations very hard for tier ones to do software innovation and bring it into production. And bringing this combination together, we are, we are able to take this, take the industry forward. We've spent uh, time here talking about your technology, uh, but let's not forget your business model. Uh, Vinayak, walk us through your business model. Describe what that looks like. Yeah, you know, business models in automotive sensing are changing. So if you see traditionally, uh, sensors were like bundled products, hardware, software, everything bundled together. Every supplier made their own box and an OEM integrated these different boxes. And as we are moving to a software-defined car, these business models are changing. You know, you have software in fewer places on the vehicle, and so the, the, the components are no longer as bundled. So the hardware and software are naturally getting unbundled as separate products because the hardware you buy it once, the software is updating more frequently. And that's where, you know, we bring in our unique business model is we, we partner with tier ones to integrate our software with their hardware. 
we we sell radar processing software. So you know all our innovation is purely packaged as a software solution. And for that to really work, right, it has to work with the hardware that tier ones make. It has to work with the processors that the OEMs are 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 using. So we establish partnerships with all the tier ones so that our software works with their hardware. We work with all the major processors, right? You know, um, Qualcomm, Nvidia, NXP, Renesas. Make sure our software supports all of those. And then we charge a licensing and royalty fee for our software. Uh, so I think this is a unique business model um, in the industry for radar. It's a software-only business model, which I think is the future for a lot of innovation in automotive sensing. Yeah, so well said, Vinayak. And this is it's fascinating to hear your perspective. I, I sometimes think we we maybe forget about radar, you know, and it's nice to have a conversation and do an interview about radar, particularly next generation radar technology for our attendees and our viewers who would like to know more about your technology and your business model or just Zendar in general. How can they get in touch with you? Just write to info at Zendar.io uh, and go to our website, Zendar.io, and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you. That's info at zendar.io to learn more about everything that Vinayak and I have been discussing. Vinayak Nagpal, founder and CEO of Zendar Incorporated. Thank you for being with us here as part of AutoSense and for sharing your expertise and your thought leadership. I look forward to seeing you in Brussels. Uh, in the meantime, safe travels, and I look forward to the chance to be able to do this again sooner than later. It was a pleasure, Carl. Thank you so much. For more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to the AutoSense YouTube channel and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. For more information on our world-class events, visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony.